All right. If you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And I'm so thankful for my family. Um, we serve as a family. People have asked us, you know, you take a, a missions trip, and they say, yes, it, it costs a lot. I mean, when we fly somewhere, it does cost a lot, but when we don't have a mortgage, we can just kind of save that every month towards uh, flights or things like that. That does allow us not to have to raise as much support. Um, and then many times when we go, we're actually living in a missionary's house, and so we're not you know, not having to pay the rent on a house while we're there. And there's just different things there, God blessed. Uh, when we were on the island of Aruba, the missionary had a van for us to drive. Uh, the very first day that we drove it, we overheated it. <laughs> he knew it had a problem. It would overheat, and then it would work the next day. Pray for your missionaries. They, they, it was amazing. Brother Matthew, if, if there's one way the devil attacks him, it's through his vehicles. I mean, every time we're there, the vehicles were having problems. So we ended up driving this five-passenger car around and picking up people on the way to church. So the most we got in there was 15 people, and that was a little scrunched. And when you go over a speed bump and you miss it, don't realize it's there. With 15 people in the car at about 40 miles an hour, that makes life a lot of fun. Only a few people hit their heads on the ceiling. But, uh, no, there's, we've had a, a great time um, Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't get discouraged. There's believers all around this world that love Christ. And they're giving out the gospel. They're being faithful. Uh, they love the Lord with all their hearts. And sometimes we can look at America. We can look at different things going on. And we can get discouraged. We don't need to be discouraged. God is still working in this world. Now, I don't know what the future holds. But I do know that the gospel is still going out. People are still trusting Christ, and they're still being discipled, and the gospel has not stopped working. Amen. We need to keep getting it out to everyone we can. Look with me in Acts chapter 16, if you would stand for just a moment. Acts chapter 16. I've got to get there myself. Acts chapter 16. And I want to begin reading in verse 14. It says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by Zeus, saying, The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we need you tonight. Lord, without your spirit and your presence, all is vain. Lord, we just ask that you would work in hearts that you would do what only you could do, Father. Lord, we need you. I need your strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If we were to look at the chapter of Acts in verse number 16, it begins, look with me in verse number 1 through 3. I just want to read this. It says, Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, there was a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. So this chapter begins, and Paul and his missionary team, and I, I like to point that out as I preach, uh, Paul, when he went somewhere, it was not just Paul. It was Paul and Barnabas, or Paul and Silas, or Paul and Timothy, or Paul and Titus. And as we look in the book of Acts, there's one place in the book of Acts where Paul had up to eight men, at least eight, that are named traveling with him. Why do you think so many churches were planted? Because Paul could come and, and those men were with him and he had men who were serving him and serving alongside him and he could lead people to the Lord and they're preaching the gospel as well. They're leading people to the Lord and they're working together and discipling the converts and then he would leave two men there and go on. 
You see that multiple times throughout the books of, book of Acts. He would leave men there to strengthen the church, to ordain elders, and then he would have them come back to him, and then he would send them out again and again. And if you were to ask me, where did you get this idea of serving God's servants? It was from the book of Acts. It was from all the men that were helping Paul alongside him. Some of them are named, some of them are not. But like I said, at one point there's up to eight of them. And here in, the, in Acts chapter 16 is Paul, and he comes to Derby and to Lystra, and it says there was a certain disciple that was there. His name was Timotheus, or we would say Timothy. We, in the two books of the Bible, 1 and 2 Timothy, are written after this young man. Now, there's something very interesting about Timothy and about this time. Paul had already been here in Lystra and Derby. Does anyone know what happened to Paul in Lystra and Anybody know what happened to Paul in Lystra? All right. Yes, sir. All right. It was not a good thing. I I can hear a pastor back here. He was stoned. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. When Timothy saw Paul for the first time, and we don't know, I don't know, I can't remember how long he was there in Lystra, but when Timothy saw Paul for the first time or heard about him, Paul was there preaching and teaching in his city, and then Paul was stoned, and they drug him out of the city and left him for dead. And of course, then he stood back up and walked back into the city. But what was it like traveling with Paul? A young man asked about hardships. Um, you know, we had different hardships. We, we've gotten in different situations as we've served the Lord and other things, but I've not had any hardships like Paul had. And Paul was, I mean, it's basically, if Paul went into a place, all the men that were with him knew there was going to be trouble. Where did Paul go that he didn't, didn't have trouble? And these men that were with him, they were in there with him. Sometimes they went to prison with him. So think about it tonight. Let, let's get right here tonight. Think about it. If there is a young man in your church, and he's 18, 19, 20 years old, and Paul came to town. And you know that everything that's happened to Paul. And you say, yeah, you should go with him. Now, if I was Timothy at this point, I would wonder what my church family was thinking about me and if they were trying to get rid of me. Put yourself in the shoes of Timothy for just a second tonight. Here's Paul. And the last time that he was in Lystra, they stoned Paul and they thought he was dead. So, Timothy, that's who you need to go minister with. Sometimes we miss things in the Bible. Timothy made a decision. I've already seen what could happen to me by following Christ. But I'm going to follow anyways. Because I see a man that is preaching the gospel, that is willing to lay down his life for the gospel's sake, and I'm willing to go with him to help him. Because that's what it says. That's what it says in verse 2, which was well reported of by the brethren which were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him. The church said, Timothy will be a blessing to you. Why don't you go with him? Notice something about Timothy. It says, which was well reported by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Timothy was already being a blessing to the church in his city, but also to the believers in another city. Oh, how we need, I mentioned it earlier, oh, how we need young people, middle-aged people, senior saints, be careful there, senior saints, that will just help in the ministry. And Timothy says, I am willing to go. I am willing to go. How about you tonight? Are you willing to go? How about right here, though? Because, And I've heard it said many times, you can't go overseas and help missionaries I've met people that try to go overseas and help missionaries or try to help churches and things. And you ask, so where did you serve first? Well, I just decided to come. No, you need to be faithful in your home church. You need to be serving in your home church. You need to be giving your all in your home church, being a witness in your own area. And then if God leads you like Timothy, go assist, go help that pastor, that missionary. And so we see Timothy here, and we're going to also look now at Lydia. We read about this in verse 14. It says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. 
So here, Paul comes, and, and the group of men, they come, they go down to the river, and they preach the gospel. Notice what it says of Lydia. She heard us. I don't know about you, but if you're going out and you're trying to give the gospel to people in today's time, many won't give you that. They don't want to hear for whatever reason. But when we find someone that will hear us, Oh, how we need to invest into that person. Oh, how we need to make sure we give them a clear presentation of the gospel. And she heard them. She heard them. She listened. And it says that she attended whose heart the Lord opened. And it, without the working of God, not, it, it's not going to happen. Whose heart the Lord opened. Because she was willing to hear that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Here's Lydia. And yes, I mean, she was a seller of purple. But, and from what we know from that, that means she would have been more well off. The sellers of purple, that was kind of the, the high-class people wore the purple garments. It was very difficult to get the purple dye. They, I know this, they crushed snails and just to get a tiny little bit of that purple dye, and they had to find them and think of all the work just to get that. And so here's Lydia. She's a seller of this, so she has some money, but she believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, and she says to Paul and his missionary team, abide with me. You judge us to be faithful. Come into my house and I'm going to feed you and take care of you. Now, hang on just a second. That's a big proposition. How many of us would be ready to lodge four to seven men and feed them every meal for a couple months? Would we be willing? Would we be willing to do that? Yeah, give up the bed. I see the young man. <laughs> give, give up the beds. Make room. Feed them. Lodge them. Do all those things. Taking care of them. This woman was willing to sacrifice. Because something happened in her life. If you would look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I just want to show you this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 15 it says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Have you come to the place, believer? Have you, and, and I pray that every person in here is a believer, but if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you've never fully trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. He is a wonderful Savior, but you must come to Him and, and you must be willing to repent, turn from your sin, and trust that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. That's something that I'm seeing all around the world, all around the United States, is people believe in a Jesus that is not the Jesus of the Bible. They say, oh, I believe in Jesus. Well, do you know that you're going to go to heaven when you die? Well, I hope so. If you don't go to church and they say, well, I, I think I'll, I'll make it to, to heaven. Well, if you don't go to church or you sin again, you start doing some bad sin, will you still go to heaven? No, I won't. I've had many people tell me that. They're not believing in the Jesus of the Bible. He says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. It's eternal life that Jesus gives, but we must come to him by faith and believing just like Lydia she attended, she heard what was spoken, and then she believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and salvation came, and she followed the Lord in baptism. But then, that's not where it ended. Oh, believer, don't let it end there. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them. He gave His life for you so that you would now live for Him and serve Him with all your heart. And why do we give to missions? And oh, it encourages us to see all the flags and all the way that your church has evolved to missions. But don't ever lose sight of why. We do it because we're living unto Him. We give so that those people all around the world can hear the gospel. We live unto Him, but 
it must be a decision we each individually make. Young people here today, you have to make a decision. When I was 18 years old, my dad was a pastor out of our sending church. My mom went into depression and my parents divorced. And at 18 years old, as a freshman in Bible college, all of a sudden I started asking questions. Is the God that my parents taught me about, is He real? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to follow Christ? Is it worth it to live a holy life and to try to seek to please the Lord in everything we do? Is it worth it to give my life to Christ? And at 14, I had made the decision to give my life to Christ in whatever way He wanted. But the question came, is it worth it? And the oh yes, it's worth it. It's worth it. Timothy made that decision. Lydia made this decision and said, my house is now for the service of the Lord. I'm going to use everything I have for Him. I'm going to give, open my home so that the gospel can go forth in my city so that other people like me can hear the gospel. I want these men to have a place to stay. I want to make sure they're fed. I want to take care of them so that they can get the gospel out to my town. How about us tonight? Are you willing I mean, what did Jesus say? Take up thy cross and follow me. I'll make you fishers of men, he told his disciples. He said, for us to, he even says in Luke chapter 6, sell what you have and give alms. There is a sacrifice that is to be made as we serve the Lord. And are we giving our best for him like Lydia was doing? And then, so tonight we've looked at two people, Timothy and Lydia. But there's one more person I want to look at before we finish. Look in verse number 16 and verse number 17. It says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. As I was studying this passage, I looked at that and I was thinking about it and what this woman is saying. But I want us to, for just a moment, can I have some young men, you two young men, I'm going to ask Jonathan and Timothy come up. Would you be willing to come up, sir? Come on up here. I just want us to get a feel for what's going on in this passage. So there now... They have now gone to Philippi. So you two men. So we, this is Paul here. You look like a Paul tonight. All right, Jonathan and Timothy and other young man, if you'll spread out over there. Give, give about 10 feet in between there. So this is Paul and one of his team members. And they're in the city of Philippi. And, and I'll be the evil woman, all right? The, the woman possessed with the devil. So what is Paul there to do? What do you where do, what do you do, Paul? Preach. All right, you go to preach the you go to preach the gospel. Paul was motivated to preach the gospel. He want everywhere he went. He's trying to preach the gospel. So they're they're moving around. Come over, come over here a little closer. All right. So here they come to this man, and they go and start trying to preach the gospel to him. So start trying to tell him tell him the gospel. These men be the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Come on, Paul, you got to keep preaching here. <laughs> These men be the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. These men be the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Okay, they decide, well, maybe we got to go on to the next one. So, what do they do? They start trying to tell the next person about the gospel. These men be the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. These men be the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. They go on to the next one. These men be the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Could you imagine? Thank you, guys. Could you imagine? This is what they went through. They're trying to get the gospel out. And here is this 
demon-possessed woman just screaming this, yelling this all day long, day after day after day. And I, I love that part of the story. And of course, it ends up, you know, that Paul did turn around and cast the demon out. And Paul and Silas went to jail for it. And we get the Philippian jailer and God doing the earthquake. And all those things take place. And the miracles that take place after this. But when I studied this, all of a sudden I noticed what this woman was saying about Paul and about the other men with him. Look at what it says. What did she say? These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. The first thing she says is these men are servants of the Most High God. Can you, in your heart, between you and God, say, yes, Lord, that's my title. I am a servant of the Most High God. Now, notice what she's saying. She says, the Most High God. There is no other God than the God of this Bible. There is a God being preached all across the United States, all across the world, it's not the God of this Bible. It's not the Jesus of this Bible. It is a fake. It is false. It is not the truth. God reveals himself to us and shows us himself in this book. And any God that someone preaches that does not line up with this God is not the most high God. And this woman says, these men are the servants of the most high God. He's above all else. But she says, these men are servants of him. Tonight, between you and God, can you say, if I was there witnessing to those people and that lady started to say something about me, she could say that about me. It was very convicting to me. These men are the servants of the Most High God, and what are they doing? What? was their purpose? What was driving them? What would make them go to places where they knew they would be beaten, where they knew they might be killed, where they knew that they would be tortured, where they knew they might get shipwrecked? What would make these men go that far? Because they would show to others the way of salvation. Sometimes I think we complicate the gospel and God's will for us. We are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. Our job as believers is to love the Lord, to love others, and to preach the gospel, to tell others about Christ so that they can know the way of salvation. Three people tonight. Timothy. Young people that are here tonight. Timothy was a younger person. And he decided that even if he would face danger, even though he came from may have been a broken home or a, a troubled home, he decided that he would go with Paul so that the gospel could go out. Lydia used what she had to help the preachers of the gospel. She heard the gospel. She trusted in Christ. And then she did not live for herself. She lived to help those in the gospel that were preaching the gospel. And then this demon-possessed woman, obviously we don't want to be like her, but we do want to be what she said about Paul and his helpers a servant of the Most High God who will show to others the way of salvation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this passage of Scripture. We thank you for the different examples in it. Lord, it's you that has to do the work. Lord, there's missionaries all around that need help that are faithfully proclaiming the gospel. There's churches all around that need help. I'm sure even here, in this church, in this area, 
the gospel needs to go out. And oh, how we need to just be servants, not be worried about what I want, not be concerned about is it going the way I want it to go at church or are we doing things the way I want, but let's just gather around and share the gospel. Let's get focused on the Word of God and obeying the Word of God and sharing the gospel and helping those get the gospel around the world because you are coming soon. The return of Christ is any time. And help us to be faithful, just servants of the Most High God. Oh, we love you and we need you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pastor's going to come. Music's going to play. There's already some praying here. Altars are open. If you'd like to come and pray at the altar. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Justin, I'm one of those that are lost. I don't know the Lord as my Savior. I'm like this uh, damsel that was a uh, spirit of divination in her. She's possessed. You might not be possessed tonight. You might not be yelling and screaming in opposition to the gospel. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, then you're just as lost as she was. And you need to be saved. Every man and every woman is in the same condition without Jesus Christ. And you must. There's no other way. You must believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. We'd love to help you with that tonight. If that's something that you're dealing with in your own heart, um, love to direct you to the scriptures and to what the Lord says, and you can trust what he says. Believers, are you serving the Most High God tonight? Are you serving him? Are you giving your best for the Most High God? I didn't say, are you doing what other people are doing? No two people do the exact same thing with their life for the Lord. So you shouldn't try to be me or some other servant. You should serve the Lord yourself. Um, I, we can look at, at Paul and Timothy and, and uh, Lydia here. and they didn't, None of them were serving the exact same way. But they were all serving. So the question is, are you serving? Are you giving your best? And if you are serving the Lord, what you're going to find is that you will be serving other people. You serve the Lord and you serve others. Maybe there's something that the Lord's put on your heart, even tonight, that you need to ask the Lord to help you with. Maybe he's put a desire on your heart. Hey, maybe he's called you to be a missionary. <laughs> maybe you put on your heart tonight of places like Aruba. Can you imagine just in that little island, there's places that don't have the gospel there that needs a gospel preaching church that they can get to within a short distance of their houses. Maybe that's what the Lord's doing in your heart. Maybe just say, hey, I just need to be a faithful witness to my neighborhood or when I'm at school or wherever I'm at. Need to be handing out tracts, whatever it is. Serve the Lord. Spend time with them. Serve them. Let them use you. And um, others will see that. Others will see that. This demon-possessed young lady, she saw that. There was no doubt that she was being controlled and the demons knew who, uh, who Jesus was and who they were serving. Would anybody say that about you? This is someone that's serving the Most High God. Father, help us tonight. This is all that's going to matter one day when we stand before you is that we serve you. Nothing else is going to matter. All the things that this world pushes upon us that we should have and work toward and try to be, it's not going to matter. But we can be your servant. 
by your help. And that'll make a difference for eternity. Would you help us even tonight to make up our minds that way? And to do the things necessary in our life by yielding to you that would allow us to be your servant, allow our mind to be open to what you have for us and direct us and guide us in these things. Thank you for this family. Thank you for the heart for you. I pray you continue to guide them and direct them very clearly in a plain path. Um, and help us, each one of us, in the individual paths you have us going on as we serve you. May you be honored and glorified. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Till we meet again, take time to know the Lord and to make him known. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God bless.